Hey everyone, Blake LaGrange here from Mastering.com. Today we're chatting with Becky Boyland. And in this video interview, we're going to take a look at how she was able to take mastering and apply it to all of these different things with her own music, be able to get radio quality sounding stuff with her, her stuff, as well as her church productions as well, being able to do really next level stuff there, as well as build her business doing post-production services. So let's take a listen. For those who don't know who you are, could you give kind of a general brief summary about who you are, what you do as it pertains to music? Yeah, I've been um, crazy about music since I was a kid and have always had it somewhere floating around in the midst of all the other things that I was doing. But for the last several years, I've been a web developer and a worship leader. I'm always just trying to, you know, add to my repertoire, learn new instruments and have been writing songs, you know, along the way. And about a year, year and a half ago, I realized that why am I not doing this full time? Why is this not just the, the main thing? And uh, so I've been working toward that a, a little bit here and there along, you know, still alongside all these other things. But my, my passion is, is writing and producing. And, and now as I've discovered how much I love the, I love all the nerdy stuff about everything anyway. So it's, it's such a great fit to dive into mastering and realize that, oh, that's that nerdy stuff <laughs> that other people don't have the patience for and I just absolutely love. Yeah, so obviously you're very eclectic in that you're well-versed in music and ever, ever since you were little, even till now, it's just like, okay, this is something that's been in your life. And then doing the worship leading stuff as well as the web developer, I mean, it's very safe to say that you're a very creative person and so... Yeah, to dive into mastering, that's that's definitely the more nerdy. I mean, I'm sure, as you know, as a web developer, too, there's both the artist and designer type of thing. So obviously, this is coming together for you quite nicely. So let's like dive in a little bit deeper. So that's you. That's your background. Rewind a bit back to when you and I chatted. We had a great conversation. It made total sense that you dove in. I like totally understand why now after talking with you and seeing what you're doing. But before we chatted... Where were you at, I guess, to give some context about where you were with your mastering skill set before you dove into anything? What were sort of the main, I guess that's the first thing. And then the second thing is like, what were some of the things where it's like you started to realize about your stuff that you were like, okay, I really need to like overcome this and maybe dive in and do something like this. What 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 was it like, I guess, before? I had done um, another uh, a production mastermind course and it was outstanding, but mastering was at the tail end. And basically the way I was approaching it was, if I dial in my chain and just kind of drop things in and go, you know, a piece at a time. And so the, the chain, especially in Ableton Live, is like this long. Yeah. <laughs> you scroll and scroll and scroll. And so it, I was doing it by ear, but I wasn't doing it with the facility, especially to recognize EQ frequencies. And it was actually really, really complicated. But now going back and comparing with some of those songs, um, it just didn't sound as good. And uh, so it, it sounded big, it sounded loud. And there were, you know, there were some positives about it, but it was not, it, I was kind of winging it, you know. <laughs> and my only hope was to kind of go back through the materials and just see if it sort of gelled a little bit more. But um, I gained so much about production out of that. But I, I think that yeah. mastering was, was a little bit of the the weak link at the end. I had been doing... Uh, a handful of songs for a friend of mine who was um, back in the day was was a professional musician. He was getting back into the game and had a huge library of old songs that had never been mastered. And so he sent them my way. I was still working with those kinds of tools, but I was loving it. And he was even at that scale was really impressed with, with what he was getting back. And it sparked the idea that, oh, maybe I can do more with this. So that's when this opportunity came along and I, and I thought, okay, this is just the right timing. This is absolutely the way to go. Got it. Yeah. So it was totally the right place, right time thing for you. So you went through a lot of the production type of stuff really beforehand. You got that down. And then as you started to realize, okay, I'm, I'm good on that. I can always improve on anything. But like the thing that was most, I guess you're most curious about as you sort of just started to see the gaps was you know, you got to that sort of intermediate to advanced level in terms of your skill set. And then it's like, okay, mastering is kind of that last gap for you. And so I think it, it's cool because it sounds like the thing that sparked that for you was your friend giving you all that unmastered music. You dove into it and been like, oh, this is something I enjoyed way more than I thought I would. And then, yeah, so uh, this makes a lot of sense, obviously. Okay. So that's where you were. Let's talk about like, before we get to where you're at now, obviously, because 
I'm excited to hear what, how you've been applying things, of course, but you dove in, we had a great conversation. Was it slash has it been like, I guess, going through the process, whether it's content or Q&A or what were some aha moments and how, how did you start to see it applying to what you're doing now? I mean, what's, what's the process been like for you as, as, you, as soon as you dove in? A lot of it is a mind shift. Even just sometimes I would listen to the, the coursework in the car. So, you know, I'm not necessarily seeing the video at those times. Of course, I'd go back and, and watch the videos, but sometimes it was just, wow, this is almost like a therapy session <laughs> to, to listen through and start to process things in, in a really different way. And then, you know, going through Sound Gym and, and getting into some of these other resources, I think now I'm, I'm like 81st percentile on Sound Gym. And that's without the last couple of months being able to do as much with that as, as I wanted to. But now I'm, I'm starting to he, not just starting, I'm, I'm hearing those frequencies. And I used to kind of chuckle at those folks, especially guitarists, <laughs> who would say from the stage, like, can you, you know, dial in at, at, at 2k and do such and such. And, and now it's, it's less of having to think real hard about it. And just starting to, to gravitate toward, oh, this is what it needs. It needs you know, a little bit of this it needs a little less of that. And it's both more, um, you know, deeper and more well thought out, but also at the same time, much more intuitive. And it's that facility that I, you know, you recognize as you, as you do something and, and really become work toward being a pro, <laughs> yeah. you know, at, at things. And then, and then you start to realize that, oh, wow, this is actually, I can, I can pull this tool out of my pocket because right. it's, it's there, it's, it's getting built right. in. It becomes more secondhand, as you said, intuitive. So it's just now in, embedded in you and starts to, to be in your DNA as you're, as you're working through stuff, which is awesome. So, I mean, it sounds like you're really extracting a lot of the information about tuning your ears and your mindset to like rethink things and learn how to think through things as you hear them and learn how to, how to hear differently, which is awesome. I'm curious your thought on sort of like the format of things. I mean, you get into it a lot, right? You have content, you've got a ton of action items, you have Q and A calls with me and like working through stuff with your own music as well. And then you've got the community. I mean, how have you found that? Is that helpful? What have you found the most helpful? What have you liked about that? I love the idea that, especially from very early on, is just dive in and play with the, the, the toys, basically, without any help. And I think for some people that might be overwhelming, I, I felt sure. like I was at least coming at that with a, a little bit more idea, even if I didn't know necessarily the most effective ways to put these chains, to, chains together. But at the same time, I felt like, okay, I, I at least know, I know some of the toys. I know some of what I need to apply. So it, it was, it was neat to, to fill with that and then sort of have that all turned on its ear as, as I got into, you know, all right, now we're actually going to get into this thing and this is what we're doing and where we're going. Yeah, absolutely. This is obviously going to apply to you more so than some people because you're doing all these different things. You're doing the worship leading stuff. You're doing your own music. It also sounds like you're helping others as well. So let's dive into where you're at now. I mean, how have you been able to apply everything that you've been going through and what you're thinking through with mastering? Like, where are you at now? One, I guess, with your mastering and two, how you've been able to apply your mastering? Well, it's really funny because, of course, with COVID, everything took a left turn. Right. And I was moving along swiftly through the course and, and really, you know, working, working hard. And then when COVID hit, I had just um, last fall taken a position at a local church and everybody said, okay, we've got to pivot. We've got to go online. Right. And so there were all these big ideas and nobody really knew how to do it. And I was like, okay, this is what we need to do. <laughs> yeah. Not realizing that meant that I was going to become a, a video and audio producer for the you next. You just volunteered yourself. <laughs> yes. Yes. For the next several months and uh, moving into the foreseeable future as well. And initially they wanted to go full live. And I said, we don't have the, tools for that. <laughs> so yeah. I decided let's, let's go with a produced service and sure. um, everybody was on board with that, which was great. And, uh, but then I became, I had volunteered to be the producer, essentially all of the progress that I had made. I was, I was initially kind of frustrated because I didn't have the time to get into the coursework like I wanted to do. But then I realized that, Hey, you know, I'm a better mixer now. I'm a better producer. And I also am taking these audio recordings because we were I was getting the multi-track stems which was right, great right so I'm taking these just as, as close to the mastered level as I can without it sounding weird since it's a live service right. um you know because you can't really take it over the top too much at least at right. least in the setting that we're in you know we're not Hillsong but it's been uh 
really great as an exercise for me because I'm consciously applying what I've been learning so that I don't lose ground, you know. And also, of course, it's incredibly satisfying to have these mixes better and better and better each week. And I realize that I'm I'm getting better at how I'm applying compressors and I'm getting even better at, you know, how I uh, how I'm EQing things and, and making sure things are, are clean and, and at a good volume level and, and, and all of that. So it's, that's been not the path that I thought I was going to be taking, but it's been, um, it's, if it was going to take me away from one aspect, it actually gave me another. So totally. Um, Everybody's pivoting now. I mean, during this time. And so what you've done is you've pivoted nicely and been able to apply this to a context that really is working for you, which is, which is awesome. And you're able to help others as well. So what's the plan moving forward? And I don't mean like with it, I mean, sure, maybe in the next month or two, but also moving forward longer term, like how do you reckon that you're going to be applying mastering to what you're already doing and what what you imagine to be doing in the future. I mean, what what's the vision here? What's the plan? Well, I'm hoping that, um, and this is just kind of a, a pipe dream yeah. um, part of it, but I'm hoping that if we decide that we want to do a recording um, of our church band, you know, now I know I can produce that and, yeah. and mix and master that and it will be wonderful. So that's just a little side thing, but um, I have been dreaming of my mastering business name and have already figured that out and have started building my website because of course web development is the other thing yeah, right. so that's actually you know the easy part so now I, i'm i'm working through in my mind okay what are the services that i want to focus on right. and obviously you know finish the coursework but i i must confess i did skip ahead a little bit because i had a song of a couple of songs of mine that i i wanted to do in a worship service but i wanted i wanted to basically have a mastered version before i gave it to the band which i know totally. it kind of sounds silly no it's but good. it was also just a great exercise to to see how far i'd come right. and i was also retracking vocals because I'm always learning. So I've been taking vocal lessons during this time as well. So when I compared those with what I had, the, the finished products from yeah. before, it was just radical, radical yeah. difference. And so that, you know, that gave me some fire and some fuel. And, and sure. so all those little things that they'll come into a, a cohesion at some point here, but yeah. at least for now, it just keeps, keeps me going, keeps me excited. And, um, but I, I'm, I, I want to get this off the ground and, yeah, and yeah. start doing this as, as the main thing. Sure. I mean, this is just snowballing more quickly than I thought. So this is awesome. What's out of curiosity, like the mastering side of things about the services you're offering, like what have you called it? What, what do you think, what are you imagining that you're going to be offering? You know, walk me through that. I mean, I'm, I'm curious to hear it's sort of the future of this. Um, well, it's called 90, 20 tracks and it's really, really, really kind of, an insular sort of reason for that, but it works, it works great as a, <laughs> as a brand. Sure. Um, because I have always for not, not every time I've lived someplace like when I was in school, but for the vast majority of my life, I have lived somewhere between interstate 90 and us route 20 oh, okay. and close to railroad tracks. <laughs> right. That's and so good. So it was just kind of an inside joke. And then I, I, it just hit me as, that just sounds so cool. And cool. no one needs to even really know, you know, why, why that is. And uh, offline, I'll send you the, the, the logo because that was a whole bunch of serendipity also and how that, that all came together. So my, my thoughts are, you know, because I've done some production and I like production, but it can be very, very time consuming. So right. I want to be selective about production right. and probably focus more on mine. But I love to mix. Um, I've I've been a live sound mixer for a lot of years. And so I, I still approach my studio mixing that way as if it's live. And uh, so I, I, I really enjoy that. And I, I, I would have no, you know, no qualms about offering that as a service and then obviously mastering. And then what I've discovered, uh, especially during this season with doing, um, with doing the band, the, the worship band is that I, again, I'm a weirdo. I love vocal tuning and I enjoy working with Melodyne and a lot of people are terrified of it. And, um, so I, I realized, oh, <laughs> I should offer this as a service <laughs> because um, not a lot of people do it. And, um, and even if they fiddle with it, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a process to get to where you're actually good at working with the, right. the tools. So right. I think those are some of the, some of the primary things. And um, 
I don't want to pack too much into that site as far as, you know, some of the other developments uh, and video kinds of things, but I, I'm leaving myself room for sure. that. I mean, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of context for you to be applying this, right? I mean, ones with your own music, just being able to see the improvement just immediately, which is awesome. Two, it's, it's basically with, with the church band as well and doing that and continuing to do these sort of production streaming services, as you will, and doing that and then applying this way. And then also building this business as well, where you've kind of fallen in love with the post-production side of things and, okay, what services am I going to offer? What brand am I going to build? And so it seems like you're just going to continue to expand and, and do kind of pivot in any way that you want and just have the options to. So congrats. This is awesome. It's so cool that you've been able to do this. I'm so eager to just kind of see how everything plays out for you as you continue along your journey here. I guess one question I'd have is, what would you say to somebody who's like, maybe had a conversation with me or somebody on our team or something, and they're like on the fence and they're like, okay, do I really want to do what Becky did and dive in and kind of really hone in on the mastering side of things, I guess, what would you say to them? Would you, would you recommend this? Oh, absolutely. Um, and, and for them, you know, if they find themselves where they wake up in the morning and they think about music and they go to bed at night and they're thinking about music, they have to dial in what it is about music that, that they're so passionate about. Right. But if, if they are listening to the little things, you know, when, when you fall in love with a song, not just because of the overall song, but there's this one little thing that happens one time if you're if you're nitpicky like that because I there are songs that I love because of that one little thing in that one little spot and that should have been a clue to me all along that that this type of aspect of of music uh would would just be a, a huge passion for me so if if that's the way that they approach music and that it doesn't take away from it by just honing in on that one thing but it actually makes it that much more special then this is this is a path they definitely want to go down and if they know that they want to go down this path they're i i can't imagine they would find any better experience than than working with you well that's super encouraging obviously but i think the main reason why you've been able to experience what you've experienced is mainly because you're somebody who takes action and you're somebody who really pours into what you do and your music and you're passionate about it. I mean, that's what it started as, right? I mean, you're going to do what you're passionate about anyways. So of course, if you combine that with just kind of the roadmap, it's just, it's all up from there. So seriously, congrats that you've been able to, to do what you've been doing. And it's just, it's fun to see and partner alongside you as you do this. I guess the last question I have is what's, I guess, one piece of advice that you'd maybe pass on to, to somebody, you know, maybe a few steps behind you or maybe like your former self? Use tools like, you know, an, an app or a calendar or something and schedule schedule the uh, the tasks in so that it, it isn't like, oh yeah, that's right. I got to get back to, you know, I got to go through the next lesson or go through the next step. Make an appointment and, uh, you know, make it pretty non-negotiable. Obviously things happen, life happens, but as much as, as much as you can put it on the calendar. And if you have to move it around that that's better than having to cancel it or forget about it. That'll help keep you on track and get you where you want to be a whole lot faster. I agree with you, by the way, I'm a slave to my calendar right now, <laughs> but well, cool. I mean, is there anything else you'd like to, sh to share or say if, if not, that's totally cool too. Um, I, I, I just can't wait till I can say I've checked everything off the, off the list. Um, but I know that's just the beginning too. So it's encouraging, especially when the craziness of life and, left turns and, and confusion and all these other things that pop up. If I start kind of getting down, then I remember, wait, I have this goal and I have, and I have a way to reach that goal. So it, it helps kind of get, get my brain back in gear and, and not focusing on those things that are distracting or discouraging because there's, sure. there's good stuff. There's good stuff that I can focus on otherwise. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're going to press forward either way because that's who you are and that's what you do. So that's, that's fantastic. Well, it's been super encouraging, obviously, to, to chat with you and just like catch up and thank you for doing this. And I just seriously wish you the best. And obviously I'm going to be partnering alongside you throughout this whole journey. So excited to see what you're going to do. I'm super thank curious so and excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see what the future holds as well. 